All right, we are back for day 18 of Avenger Code, which I did not do on actually day 18, so I am doing now before the final day. But um, yeah, here we go. Okay, I see a bunch of pairs of numbers, and then a grid. Uh, I should have fetched the input. Um, one such path. Oh, I see. Th these are positions of um, things in a grid. Uh, let's represent our grid with default dict. Okay, um, and then I think it's just this. Wait, the first kilobyte falling. These are byte positions, left edge and top edge of memory space. Okay, currently in the top left corner. You'll need to simulate the falling bytes to plan out where it will be safe to run. Simulate just the first few bytes falling into memory space. As they fall into memory space, after the first 12 bytes have fallen, it would look like this. Simulate the first kilobyte falling onto your memory space. Minimum number of steps needed to reach the exit. Okay, so it's simply the shortest path after, um, after we do the first few things. Um, how big is our memory space? Let's see. 70. 70 by 70. Um, and then, oops, it didn't let me do that. Um, why not? That's because I did it like this. Okay, so we only want the first 1,024 so far. They're all unique, yep. Okay, um, and now it's just the straightforward uh, breadth of research. Um, I have a Dijkstra's, so that's what I'll use. Once again, uh, start is zero, zero, and then our target is going to be what? The bottom top Shortest path, top left corner to the exit. Where's the exit? Exit is the bottom right, I assume. I'm going to assume it's the bottom right. Um, and then oops, uh, I have to check valid. I think that looks good. Um, I keep forgetting this. What did I do wrong? Oops, I need to add the distance. Um, distance is just always going to be one. That doesn't look right. Did I not do right? Bottom right corner at 70, 70. Wait, I thought it was uh, range from 0 to 70, not 70 wide. 284. Okay, that's correct. Part two the first byte that will cut off the path to the exit. Um, interesting. We definitely could do this with a union find, but it might be faster just to like brute force it. Um, so I'm gonna just gonna I'm just gonna brute force it. So um, I guess I could also binary search it. Um, then now what we'll do is we will just loop this. Um, and we will do uh, they're not actually rocks, but should be fine. Okay. Seems 
good to me. And then we just repeat this whole algorithm. And if we coordinates of the first byte will prevent the exit from being reachable from your starting position. Um, I don't think I'm using x and y, so I'll just do these. Um, and I'll also, just to get a sense for how fast this is, do that. That's pretty fast. Um, get rid of this print and that print. Start it running. Then also get the pipi running while I'm at it. Fifty-one fifty. There we go, and that's day eighteen. Um, yeah, not a whole lot to that. You definitely could have done this more efficiently with Union Find. Um, I have my, my times here, so I'm actually a little curious how I would have done. I assume I wouldn't make leaderboard because I heard part two was, or I, I heard it was very LMable, well, which it was. So I would not have made part one, and. Oh, I would have barely made part two. That's a little sad. Uh, I missed out on like seven points by not doing it on the actual day of. Um, man, that's that's a, that's a little sad, but not that sad. It's like only seven points. Um, but yeah, I guess quickly I'll talk about the question. So um, this is pretty similar to a lot of the other grid problems we've been given this year. We have some grid, and we're asked about like the shortest path. Well, we're not asked about the shortest path of the grid. We're asked that. Well, I guess we are. Yeah, we're asked what the shortest path through the grid is. The difference is that the grid is specified in a list of ordered coordinates. So to start off with, uh, in part one, we just need to do a little bit of work to convert these coordinates into um, into like an actual grid. Um, and I use the default dict for that just because it's like nice and easy. Um, you could also use like a regular dictionary; doesn't really matter too much, or or even just the set to be honest, because a set of occupied coordinates. Um, but yeah, so the first thing you do is you construct the grid. Um, and it says only use the first 1,024 um, of these locations. And then what's the shortest path? So again, um, pretty straightforward. You kind of just do that. Um, and then I used I used Dijkstra to find the shortest path here, but this is just as good as breadth. Well, this is technically a little bit worse complexity-wise than breadth first search. Uh, but really, you just want a breadth first search here. I only use Dijkstra because I have one pre-written. Um, and then part two now says at some point, it will become unreachable. Um, like if you simulate all of these, I think there were like three to four thousand or so. Um, if you put all of them in, then it will be unreachable to get from the start to the exit. At which point does it become unreachable? Um, and you know, I said union find, but that's not actually. Oh, I guess there's a way to do it that way. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll get back to that. Um, yeah, so it asks what the first, and it, and it says find the coordinates of the first thing that gets placed that will block your position. Um, and naively, a thing you can do is you can just like go one by one and repeat the pro the repeat the whole search from part one uh, every single time. And the first time you find out that the search fails, that's when um, that's when you can't make it anymore. And that is exactly what I did. Um, it, things you could do to make it maybe a little bit more efficient. Um, possibly you could like binary search on the the like number of things to add. Um, because certainly, if it becomes unreachable at like 1,070, then it's also going to be unreachable at like 1,090. So you you can basically binary search on this. You can try some number, um, generate the grid, try it on that grid. If it's not reachable, then you like search smaller. If it is reachable, then you search larger. Um, definitely could do that. One downside of doing that is just one you have to write a binary search. It's like a little bit annoying. Um, it's been a hot minute since I've written one. Uh, another is that you do need to like completely regenerate the grid when you do that. Um, if instead you do it like a linear search, um, so after 1024 you try putting in uh, rock number 1025, or well, zero index to 1024, then 1025, and so on and so forth, and doing it every step of the way, this is going to be pretty slow to act because you like you need to actually check each individual one, um, but you don't need to regenerate the grid. I would guess naively that generating the grid is not that expensive compared to doing the search. So you probably should prefer the binary search here. Um, but it's not completely obvious. And also, it's like, like I said, it's more code to write. It's just a little bit annoying. 
Um, I think the the like big brain thing to do here is maybe use the union find algorithm. Um, I hadn't fully thought through how to do it, but oh yeah, I, I think I think you could do it this way. Um, so to do it the union find way, what you would do is I think you would fill in every single one of the locations, and every empty spot is going to be like a node in your union find set. And whenever, and then basically you process it backwards. You imagine removing rocks one at a time. And when you remove a rock, you just need to union uh, any like new adjacencies that you formed. So if it's the case that um, if this was your grid and you're now like removing this rock, you would union this component with this component. Um, and the idea is that like these components will all be attached. And the union find algorithm lets you very quickly query whether any two nodes are like part of the same component. So you can just query, is this the same component as this component? Um, and keep doing that every single step of the way. And that would give you like a very fast time complexity, something like nearly linear, just because you can find it so efficient. Um, but yeah, that would also require a lot of code and a union find implementation, which I don't have handy. Um, so yeah, I just ended up doing it with the uh, naive way and throwing PyPy at it. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for day 18. I will see you later tonight for the final day of Advent of Code, day 25. Um, yeah, see ya.